come together to have a worship experience. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. We come yeah. together to have an experience. Yeah.
the program is for the Women's uh, Equality Month. That's August the 26th. So if you don't have anything to do that day, if you're on Camp Air John, if you work there, but if you do have something to do and can plan accordingly, we invite you to come out and take part in the Women's Equality Day. That's August the 26th on Camp Air John. Amen? Amen. Amen. I am not bringing the word or the message that day. I am just participating on the program. I think I'm on the beginning and then coming up on the rear of the program. But nevertheless, Ashley invite you to come out just to help celebrate uh, the, the accomplishments of our women. Amen? Amen. 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 Secondly, wanted to share uh, with you just a quick word um, to remind us that we always want to be uh, considerate of one another. Uh, the word of God tells us that that which we have done to the least of these, that which we have done unto him. So remember Amen. those who are less fortunate than we are in these last and evil days. Those who uh, don't have proper clothing, may not have proper cooling in their residences. Mm -hmm. Amen. Maybe not have access to uh, proper food, nourishments. If you know individuals, it doesn't matter their nationality. Amen. If you know who they are, then let us reach out. Amen. Amen. With our hand, oh God, and help them, reach out to them, give them food, give them clothing, whatever yes. we have, Amen. and we can help those who are less fortunate than we are. Amen. We ought to do that as a church. Am I right about that? Amen. 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 Because I don't know about me, but one day somebody reached out and helped me, and I was Amen. appreciative, and I thank God for Amen. it. So let us do that. Let us be mindful of those who are around us who are less fortunate than we are. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's remember that where there is no vision, the people perish. Amen. So let us always be looking to the hills to find that next thing that God would have us busy our hands with. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you so kindly. I'll tell you what, those of you who uh, could not or did not make it out to Sunday school this morning certainly missed a wonderful treat. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand clap. Whenever we come together. Amen. Amen. But Amen. I just felt a special spirit presence in the, mm -hmm. in the atmosphere this Amen. morning. Special presence of the Lord in yes. our midst this morning. Amen. But thank God for our teacher who stepped in so dutifully. God bless you, Deacon Gary, thank for you. studying and showing yourself approved. Hallelujah. A man right in the body in the world. We thank God for you. Thank God for you stepping in this morning to teach Sunday school for our boys. And we know that you're going to be coming at other times to share the gospel. Um, be sure, remember to check our website. That's www.rebirthoh.org because we'll be posting things there. The church calendar is there. Also, those of you who can and will have internet access, please, 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 all of you, under the sound of my voice, those of you who join us through media means on Facebook Messenger, please go out to YouTube mm -hmm. and search for Rebirth mm -hmm. space O-H-I-N-C. Search for us and like us and subscribe to our YouTube channel because all of our services are being posted there. And then don't just subscribe. Whenever you go out and subscribe, share the word with somebody else. Amen. 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 We'll have a selection from Brother Fernando, and if the Lord says so, we'll come back with what thus said the Lord by the way of preaching. Our worship, 
experience. It's more than just a time that we come together. Yeah. yeah. But we come together to have a worship experience. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We come yeah. together to have an encounter. Yeah. Come on, right about it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We come together to have yeah. a day with our great God. Yeah. Am I right about yeah. it? Amen. We bless him and we thank, thank him you, too for he has already shown himself powerful and faithful on today and he has met us here in this place. And we thank, thank God for his presence in the building. Yeah. Hallelujah. He declares in his word where two or three are gathered together in his name. There yeah. I am. Yeah. He promised us that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. There I am yeah. in the midst of him. So we thank God for his presence, for the presence of the Holy Spirit, to our yeah. ushers, to our deacon in his absence, and to our acting deacon, and to the trustees, and and to our media ministry, yeah. to all of you, all of God's yeah. children, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. All of God's children. We're doing it to you in God's house. We thank you for it on today. Yeah. We bless you so kindly for all Amen. that you have done. We're going to get right into the word. We're coming this morning. Uh, is it noon yet? Oh, not quite. We're still in the morning hour. Yeah. ask you to stand to your feet if it's customary for you to stand. For the reading of God's word, if you don't stand normally, then that's fine. The word is yet the same. We're coming today as the Lord gives utterance from the book of Genesis. Hallelujah. Old Testament, first book. Hallelujah. Genesis. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading to you from the King James translation. If you have another translation, that's fine. It may read a little bit differently, but it's still the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 We're going to read into your hearing the first three verses of that scripture. So that's Genesis, the 12th chapter, verses Amen. 1, 2, and 3. Amen. Amen. When you have it, say amen. Amen. If anybody doesn't have it, say hold a minute. Hold a minute. I heard one hold a minute. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. When you have it, say amen. 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 If you're waiting, say hold a minute. I hear none. Praise God. When you find it, it reads as such. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, Brother Fernando, get ready, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, mm -hmm. and I will make of thee a great nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I will bless thee, mm -hmm. and make thy name great, mm -hmm. and thou shalt be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I will bless them that bless thee, mm -hmm. yes. and curse him that curseth thee. Mm -hmm. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father. Abba Father. Yes. Abba Father. Yes. Thank you. Which art in heaven. Thank you. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all that is evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, Lord. Father, we pray now and we ask you, God, that you would reveal the secret of your word. Yes. Yes. Reveal it to the hearts of your children in the name of Jesus. Yes. God, those deep and secret things of God. Yes. Bring revelation today, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, shine the light of your anointing on your word. Thank you, Lord. 
in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let our understanding come forth like never before. In the name of Jesus. God, let the seal of your word be broken today. Open, unfold your word to us today. In the name of Jesus. Allow us, oh God, to understand and to have revelation into your will and into your purpose for our lives. In the name of Jesus. Give us, quicken in us, your spirit of wisdom and revelation right now in the name of Jesus. God, let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened on today. Help us, God, to understand those heavenly things in your word. Open now, God, our eyes that we might behold the things, the wondrous things out of thy word. Let our understanding yes. be quickened yes. regarding the mystery of your kingdom. Yes. Speak now, O oh God, now, that our joy yes. might be full. Yes. We thank you, God, thank you. that your promises are yea yes. and in you, amen. amen. So we know that your word yes. will not go out yes. and return unto you void. Yes. But it shall prosper yes. in the thing whereto thou sentest. Yes. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you now for your word. We thank you now for this opportunity. Thou humble servant, oh God, as I stand here behind this sacred desk. God, I don't take it lightly. I humble myself as an instrument in the capable hands of the master. In the name of Jesus, give me clarity, oh God, of thought. Precision of speech, God. Let your word come forth, God. Sharper than a two-edged sword. Yes. Cutting unto the dividing of son of soul and spirit, even unto the marrow of the bone. Yes. God, we rejoice because you know the thoughts and intents of a man's heart. I pray now, oh God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart is found pleasing and yes acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer this is our collective prayer in Jesus name and redeemed said amen amen amen, amen. 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 you may be seated in the presence of our great God hallelujah we bless the Lord and we thank him too for another opportunity to stand here and to share what we feel that the Lord has laid upon our hearts as we have studied and meditated and prayed and talked with the Lord. There's one thing that the Lord really brought home for me when I was thinking about this word and meditating on it, is that when we don't have uh, direction. We wander aimlessly. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. only day to day, but for some of us, we wander aimlessly through life. Mm -hmm. When we don't have direction, when we don't recognize or acknowledge what God has called us for or created us for. Yes. And I want you to know today that God has called and created us all yes. divinely for mm -hmm. his purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, yes. he has given each of us a gift yes. whereby mm -hmm. that we would prosper, but that we would also be a blessing mm -hmm. to those around us. Yes. Yes. Am I right about amen. it? Amen. The word is all right. Just say amen. 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 So then the passage that we share today comes to us from a very familiar book in the Old Testament. And we see that God uses Abram to teach us a, a very important lesson with some specific details in mind. Mm -hmm. As I said, when we don't have a focus or an aim, we, we wander aimlessly and, 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 and time is wasted and, and, and troubles come and visit us unnecessarily when we wander aimlessly. So if, if I can and if you will receive it, the title of the message for today is Divine Destiny. Amen. Amen. 
divine destiny. I want you to know today that you and I both have a destiny. Amen. And what that means is that we have a purpose in life. We don't just get up in the morning and put our clothes on and go out into the world with no plan or purpose or intent in mind. I submit to you today that God has a plan for every waking moment in our lives. Yeah. Am yeah. I right about it? Yeah. God is intimately involved in the day to day of our lives. When he wakes us in the morning, he's there. Mm -hmm. He watches over us or he commands his angels to watch over us as we slumber and sleep through the night. Right. Am I right about yeah. it? Yeah. As I recall, the first prayer that my parents taught me, it went something like this, and perhaps some of you were taught the same prayer. Some of you may have heard it before. But it said, now yes. I lay me down to sleep. Yes. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And then for me, I would go on and I said, God bless my mom and my dad. Yes. And my dog and my grandmothers and all of my friends. Yes. That prayer for me as a child, that prayer is an example of what my life and my world encompass at that time. Mm -hmm. Am I right about yes. it? That prayer is, is it, it, it represents what I knew and what was around me and what was intimately, acutely aware to me at that time. My prayer was limited to the things in my life that were most important to me, and it represented the expanse of my territory. Yeah. Amen. Am I right about yeah. it? Yeah. So surely as I have grown and as God, hallelujah, has enlarged my territory, and as God has expanded my insight, mm -hmm. then my prayers have truly increased. Am I right about it? Yeah. What I, I use that example because what I want to say to you in regards to that was if I was satisfied, mm -hmm. hallelujah, with that prayer, mm -hmm. and if I was satisfied with only being able to have that level of conversation with the Lord, mm -hmm. then truly that level would be all that I would have ever reached in my life. Am I right about Amen. it? I say that because I want us to understand that although God has divinely given our destiny, uh -huh. that there's some innate things in us that we still need to do. Uh -huh. There's some desire that needs to be quickened in each of us, hallelujah, and then once we have that desire to do better, uh -huh. when we have that desire to go further, yeah. when we have that yeah. desire to know him better, yeah. when we have that desire to do more for the Lord, yeah. I want you to know today that he'll step right in yeah. and he'll quicken yeah. us yeah. and he will enlarge our yeah. territory yeah. and he will give us just what we need. Yeah. Yeah. To be who he's called us to be. Amen. Am I right about Amen. it? Yeah. God's intervention in our lives. It makes all the difference in the world. From our scripture today, I want to, to share with you from that title, Divine Destiny. But I also want to share with you three points. And we're going to try to get out of your way if thus saith the Lord. So the first point is divine intervention. The second point is our destiny. And then the third point is destruction of disobedience. Divine intervention, our destiny or divine destiny, and destruction of disobedience. Amen? Amen. So then when we look at divine intervention, from our text, we can glean that God called Abram, and, and, and he called Abram to get what? Out of his country. Mm -hmm. He called Abram to 
move away from his kindred or his family. He called Abram to move away from what he knew as the ark of safety. Mm -hmm. He called Abram to move out of his position of privilege and comfort because Abram's place of residence was in the king's quarters. Mm -hmm. And God tells Abram, he says, I'll tell you where you're going later. Now, I'm paraphrasing. The scripture doesn't use the word later, but he also doesn't tell Abram where that's he's right. going. That's right. He that's just right. tells him to go. That's, that's Am right. I right about that's it? Right. We got any scholars in the house. Somebody say amen. 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 So, so because he didn't tell him where to go, then we take and make the assumption that God indicated, I'm going to tell you where you're going yes. at a later time. Yes. But what we need to pick up here is that Abram didn't stumble, he didn't wait, he didn't hesitate, he didn't question God. And the next thing that we hear is that Abram was leaving his kindred. Yes. Am I right about right. it? Yes. Heading on a journey. Now, we know that Abram didn't know where he was going. He didn't know whether he needed a duffel bag, or a, a raincoat, an umbrella, right. whether he needed U.S. dollar, KD, or whatever, but he knew and I'm right about it. Yeah. That's all right, amen. Yeah. But he knew that God had told him to get going. Yeah. How many of us has God told to get going? And are we waiting? Yeah. Have we questioned God? Have we stumbled? Yeah. Have we been lackadaisical yeah. about what God told yeah. us to do? Yeah. And then do we try to pinpoint reasons why we're not doing what God told us to do? We're talking about your divine destiny and divine intervention. So how many of us would stop when God tells us to do something? How many of us would question whether or not we heard God right when he tells us to get moving, to go here or to go there or to say this or to say that or to give this or to give that, to donate some of this or to donate some of that. How many of us would stand back and question whether we heard God right? I don't believe I heard that one right. You want me to give how much? You want me to donate? You want me to go where God at what time? You want me to get up out of my bed at what hour and pray? How many of us today yeah. would question the voice of God? And I submit to you today that we would not question and don't question because we don't recognize his voice. We question because there's something down on the inside that don't want to obey what God said. Amen. Am I right about it? Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us would just question God? Amen. Wait on God to tell us again. Well, I heard it the first time. I'm going to wait until I get a confirmation. I don't believe I heard it right the first time. But we see in the scriptures today that Abram, he didn't miss a beat. As the scripture confirms in Genesis 12 and 4, it goes on to say, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. It didn't say Abraham waited. It says, and so, hallelujah, mm -hmm. Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And not only that, Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Now, we're going to deal with that age thing later on. But I want you to know right now that he was 75 years old, mm -hmm. saith the scripture. When God speaks to us, there will be times when we feel apprehensive about moving to do what God has called us to do. But we can rejoice today in knowing that God calls us. Yeah. He has already pre-designated us. Hallelujah. He has established our destiny and our going. Mm -hmm. And he commands us and he has sealed us according to his word. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Amen. Yeah. So what I'm trying to get, the point I'm trying to make is that we don't have to worry when we hear God's voice. Amen. What we need to do is get busy about the work that has been assigned to our hand. Mm -hmm. Am I right about Amen. it? Because what happens is God has assigned each of us a work to do. He has given us each a unique gifting. 
And when we are lackadaisical about getting busy using the gifting that God has given us, then those who are around us go lacking. Why? Because the gifting and the blessing, mm -hmm. hallelujah, that mm -hmm. resides only in our loins, yeah. that resides only on our tongue, yeah. that resides only on our hands, yeah. is not being used to bless the people of God. Yeah. Am I right about it? Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. When we speak of divine intervention, we are specifically referring to actions of God that have an immediate impact, hallelujah, in the lives of the just, in the lives of the people, in the lives of your enemy, in the lives of your friend, in the lives of your foreigner. Am I right about it? So when we don't get busy, then that subjugates at the fact that the blessing is lying dormant or the blessing is being stagnated because the one who's holding the blessing Amen. ain't Amen. busy about God's business. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. It's all right. Y'all can say amen. amen. So just as God called Abram for a purpose, just as he shook up Abram's world, just as he caused him to move to a new location, just as he called him in the midst of what seemed like a barren land, some of God's actions are prophetic in our lives. Meaning he might call us and tell us right now what's going to happen, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to move right now, but it means we have to seek God's face for further instruction. Amen. Am I right about Amen. that? See, we, don't, we, 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 we bad for not reading the instructions. We want to be able to open the box and put it together. It ain't read that instruction. And after we get it together, there's screws and caps and legs and arms and everything still left in the box. Well, I want you to know today, things are too expensive. The, 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 the manufacturer don't put extra in the box. If it's in the box, it was intended to be a part of the program. Am I right about that? Hallelujah. But if we don't see God's face, then we'll be subject to move on to our own accord. And we'll think it's okay that there's some parts left behind. But I want you to know today that God does a complete work. The gift that's in you is designed to do a complete work in the lives of those who are around you. Amen. Am I right about Amen. it? It's designed to equip those who are around you. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you go lacking because the gifting that you need, the person who's holding it is not dispensing it either. Hallelujah. Do you see the round robin yeah. effect? I'm not doing what I'm supposed to yeah. do, and you're not doing what you're supposed yeah. to do, and he's not doing what he's supposed to do, uh -huh. and then all of us are missing out mm -hmm. on the blessing of the Lord. Exactly. But we thank God that Abraham got know. busy about God's business. Yes. Am I right about yes. it? I want you to know today that some of God's actions in our lives yes. are eternal. Yeah. What do you mean, Pastor? They're eternal. They are things that God has spoken into your destiny. Yeah. Hallelujah. That don't have a beginning and that what don't have an end. Yeah. These things are everlasting to everlasting. Yeah. From right. glory to glory. Yeah. These things in your life have always existed yeah. and they will continue to exist. Yeah. Even after the blood is no longer running warm yeah. in your veins. Yeah. Why? Because God has uniquely designed yes, you. Given that gift just to you. Yeah. In the name yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. He's not a God that will give and take away. Hallelujah. He is a God who giveth and taketh away, but he will not give you a gift and then turn around and take it back again. He is not an Indian giver. That which he has given unto you it's yours. Am I, about, am I right about it? Hallelujah. God is not opposed, hallelujah, to the temporal, but what he gives us is eternal. Am I right about it? For example, God's love for us is eternal. Am I right about it? Paul reminds us and he says, we don't have to stand alone in anything. Whether we are a Jew or a Gentile, whether we are a bondman, or a free man, yeah. meaning whether we are saved or are a sinner in need of a savior, yeah. whatever God has given us is ours to have yeah. and to hold. Yeah. Am I right about yeah. it? Yeah. God, I'm talking about the big G God, yeah. is always 
always intervening on our behalf. Yeah. We don't stand alone in anything. The Bible declares, wherefore let him that thinketh he stand alone take heed lest he fall. Yeah. What the Bible is saying, don't you think you're fighting these demons by yourself? Yeah. Huh? Because you have an advocate, an advocate advocate in the Father. Yeah. Don't you think you in this thing by yourself? Because God is right by your side. Don't you think your enemy is going to be able to triumph over you? Because you have an advocate in the Father. Don't you know he called himself your battle axe in a time of war? Don't you know he said a thousand will fall at one hand and ten thousand at a side, but none of them will come nigh your dwelling place? Because the Lord is on your side. In the name of Jesus, we bless your name today, God, for this divine destiny. We're going somewhere in the Lord. Now, if we forsake our relationship with him, then we're just going to be treading water. We're just going to be treading water. We're not going to be going anywhere. We're not going to be moving. We're not going to be producing. We're not going to be impactful. We're not going to be making anything happen in the earth realm. God has given us dominion in the earth realm yeah. to lay hand on the sick. Yeah. And he promised that they would recover. Yeah. He says, when one has sinned, let that one that had sinned, yeah. if he had sinned, yeah. call for the elders of yeah. the church. And the elders of yeah. the church yeah. are supposed to come yeah. and lay hand on the yeah. And the word tells me that if that sick one yeah. had sin, yeah. that God in his infinite wisdom will forgive the yeah. sin yeah. and the one who was sick yeah. will be recovered yeah. in the name of Jesus. That's why we ought to do what God has told us to do. Yeah. We got to know what calling we walk in. We got to know what our name is. I know my daddy named me Beverly. But God said my daughter. The one who I put the word in her mouth. I call her my preacher. I call her my teacher. She is my pastor. She is a leader in my kingdom. She is a general in my army. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have given me a good name. A good name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Our divine destiny. Mm. We don't have to worry about temptations. We don't have to worry about falling short because the Bible says that there's no temptation that have taken us except that which is common unto man. But God is faithful who will not suffer us to be tempted above that which we are able. Am I right about it? Amen. But with that temptation that God will also make a way of escape. Yeah. That we may not, be, that we may bear whatever the temptation is. Yeah. So we, God is always making a way for you and I. Oh, yeah. When we look at Abram, am I right about it? Yeah. We find that he had time when he too didn't fully trust God. Am I right about yeah. it? Yeah. We find that he had a time when he didn't truly trust God, even while he was on his journey. Yes, he got moving. But he didn't trust God. And I'm going to tell you why we know he didn't trust God. Because when Abraham, or Abram and Sarai, his wife, came out of Jerusalem and it, or came out and went into Egypt, he told his wife, he said, now they're going to look on you. And your, your countenance, you're beautiful. And I'm going to need you to help me tell this lie so that they won't kill me. Am I right about That's right. it? That's right. And That's Sarai right. went along with Abram's plan. Hallelujah. But we find that we are just like Abram sometimes. When we find ourselves in a tough place, when we find ourselves facing difficult obstacles, we find ourselves facing trials and tests, sometimes we'll tell a lie. Oh, I don't feel well. Oh, I, I don't know how to get there. Uh, I don't have it this time. I had to pay this on my bill this time. Uh, Lord, you know I don't speak well. <laughs> God, you know I ain't got no church suit. <laughs> I ain't got no church dress. Huh? I don't have no church shoes. Uh, we'll find every excuse under the sun when we don't really want to do what God has called us to do. Sometimes the trials that we go through will cause us to fall back mm -hmm. on sin. Sometimes the road that's ahead of us 
shows uh, will cause us to fear and will cause us to fall back on sin. But I want you to know today that if God called you to it, don't you know he can pull you through it? Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. Hallelujah. If God brought it to your doorstep, don't you know God already made a way for you to escape over it? In the name of Jesus. Am I right about it? Yeah. When we find ourselves in a tough place, that's the time for us to turn to God and not turn to ourselves. Looking for our own resources and our own direction and our own ways of understanding things. When we run into a hard place, when we find ourselves in the dungeon, we need to look up to God who can bring us out yeah. of the muck and the miry clay. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to learn to keep God in the fold yeah. of our journey. Yes. Yeah. Am I right about yeah. it? We have to learn to keep God in the forefront of where we're going. Yeah. We have to learn to keep God in the midst of what we're doing. When we are tempted to turn to our own devices for a resolution, God, and I'm talking about the big G God, yeah. he is standing right by. Mm -hmm. Remember that God affirms to us for whom he did for no. He also did pre-designate. Okay. Why? To be conformed to his the image of his son, that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. And he went on to say, moreover, whom he did predesignate, them he also did what? Call. Yeah. And whom he called, them he also did what? Justify. Yes. And whom he justified, he goes on to say that them are also glorified. Yeah. So what that says to us is that if God has called us, he has equipped us. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Yeah, yeah, well, what yeah. shall we say to these things then? If God has called us and God has equipped us, then when the storms of life come, mm -hmm. hallelujah, all we have to say then, what shall we say to this storm? If God be for us, yeah. who can be against us? Yeah. All we have to do is yeah. trust in yeah. him. Am I right about Amen. it? We walk by faith. And not by sight. Yeah. The word tells us that by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which should afterward receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. Mm -hmm. And he went out, not knowing whether he was going to go. But it goes on to say that by faith, he sojourned in the land of what? Promise. Don't you know God has promised us a thing? Mm -hmm. As in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, with heirs of him of the same promise. So that tells us that when we go out, we can go out together mm -hmm. because we are heirs of the same promise. Amen. Hallelujah. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Here a little and there a little. Yeah. You have one gift, I have another gift, yeah. and when we all come yeah. together, yeah. God keeps the Lord. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're talking about divine intervention. Uh -huh. We rejoice today in knowing that our God is no respecter of persons. Amen. He has established a divine purpose mm -hmm. in the lives of his people. Yes, Am I right about Amen. it? Those who are elect do follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Because when he's called us, we can't turn away from it. Even if we run and go astray, the call will never change. Amen. In the name of Jesus. That's why the word of God says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Because when God settles that word in our heart, that word does not dissipate. That word will never fail. He yes. goes on to say, my sheep, they hear my voice. Yes. And I know who they are. And they follow me. So God's choice does not eliminate the need for us to exercise our faith. Mm -hmm. Just because we've been called and set apart, we still have to walk by faith, yeah. not by sight. Yeah. That's what Abram was doing. He walked by faith and not by sight. When God says, get out from your kindred and get out from your, your, your house and your land and go into a place where I'm going to lead you. How many of us would do that today? Without some direction, without knowing what lies ahead, without them having a sign on the dotted line, without knowing what kind of salary we're going to have, without knowing the living arrangements, without knowing how we're going to get there, how we're going to be sustained while we're on our journey. Mm -hmm. Abraham didn't know any of those things, but he went on anyway. Why? Because God had called him. 
Am I right about it? Amen. In all things, we ought to move by faith. Oh, yeah. We got to exercise our faith in all things. But in all things, we give God thanks because whenever we go through something, God is right there. Yes. Brethren, it goes on to say, brethren, beloved by, by God, because God has chosen you from the beginning mm -hmm. for salvation through sanctification by the spirit and faith in truth. Because he has chosen us, hallelujah, in faith we ought to trust him. Amen. Am I right about it? We might have a problem trusting God if we don't understand or know that we've been called. But I submit to you today that every one of us, each of us have been divinely called and divinely appointed and uniquely gifted to be a blessing in the house of God. Amen. Amen. I got, look, look right there in that bag right there. Sure, mm -hmm. There's a towel. I think Amen. it's in there. Thank you so much. Each of us, and if it's not, it's all good. I'll use this. Each of us have been uniquely designed and equipped to do the work that's in our that God has assigned to our hand. He has established us with Christ Jesus. That's why we are heirs along with him because God has established us with him and he has anointed us. Am I right about it? He has sealed us and he's given us the earnest of his spirit in our hearts. You might ask, well what does that mean, pastor? Well that means that God has divinely intervene in your business <laughs> and he has sealed you and he has confirmed you and he has blessed your future and your destiny see your future means one thing but your destiny yes. that's something else yes. see your future may be like 10 years down the road on, your man. future could be tomorrow yes. but your destiny is eternal yeah. yes. am I right about it yes. hallelujah let's move on our destiny our destiny. God has predetermined our destiny. Our destiny is inevitable. Our destiny represents an irresistible course of events. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Amen. In other words, there's nothing that can change our destiny. Mm -hmm. There's some things that can happen to change our future. But our destiny has yeah. been written on high. Yeah. And whatever God has predestined for our lives, it's going to come to pass. Amen. Am I right about Amen. it? There's some things we can do to hinder it. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Such as disobedience. Uh -huh. But God has predestined Already. our destiny. Yeah. It is written in the heavens. Already. There's nothing we can do Already. to change our destiny. Amen. When we consider the whole story of April, Godly, divinely reassigned him. Isn't that all right? Yeah. Divine reassignment. That's all right. Divinely reassigned him. He moved him from an old house mm -hmm. to a new location. Yeah. He took him from a mediocre living standard yeah. to living circumstances that gave him life and that more abundantly. Yeah. He enlarged his territory and his household. He changed his name and he gave him a new name. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. In his old age, uh, the Lord quickened the seed of Abraham and Sarah and gave them an heir to every promise of God. Yeah. See, our destiny yeah. is about more than just us. Uh, yeah. Our children's destiny yeah. is wrapped up in our yeah. destiny. Yeah. Our grandchildren's yeah. destiny is tied yeah. up and tangled up with our destiny. Yeah. So when we don't do what we're supposed to Jesus. do, then our children and our grandchildren, Jesus. Sarah and eight, ten generations Jesus. following us will not be able to line up oh. in the blessing yes. that they were supposed to have. Amen. Because of our issues. Yeah. Because of our shortcomings. Amen. Because of our disobedience. Yeah. So it's not just about us. If you think about it, think about Abraham. Our destiny mm -hmm. was wrapped up in Abraham. Yeah. If it wasn't yeah. for Abraham being uh -huh. faithful and obedient, yeah. no telling where we would be today. Uh -huh. Am I right about it? Yeah. So Abraham was obedient to God, yeah. and he said, because of faith, all of the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right about yeah. it? Yeah. So we got to understand this is about more than just you and I. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We got to think Thank about those Lord. who are yet in the womb. Yes. Yeah. Those who we haven't even counted yes. yet. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you believe that they're coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you know that God is going to send a seed. Yes. If you believe to the seventh generation and beyond. Mm -hmm. 
then you have to know that God has a plan. There's a destiny attached to your life. You might die or lay down and rest one day, but your generation and your name will live on. That's why he says a good name is better than great riches, because your name will not die. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because God has written our destiny in time, he will perform in our lives. Mm -hmm. Isn't that all right? Yes, because our destiny, I like that. Because our destiny is written in time. Yes, My God. Thank you. See, I like that because only God controls time. Yes. Isn't that all right? Yes. See, a man or a woman, they'll cut you off when they get ready. They'll feed you a little rope, and just when you think you're good, they'll snatch the rope back. On, Am I right about yeah. it? They'll give you good support for a year or two. Uh -huh. Are you thinking y'all all right? Uh -huh. Then all of a sudden, you look around, you won't have no support. Uh -huh. But I thank God uh -huh. that he don't do us like that. Yeah. He says, I'll never leave you. Oh, no one will forsake you. Yes. You can depend on God. Oh. It is written. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Am I right about yeah. it? Lead not to your own understanding, yeah. but in all your ways. No. Acknowledge him, no. and he will direct your path yeah. toward the destiny that he's already predestined all for right. your life. All Am right. I right about Amen. it? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be encouraged, my sister. Yeah. Be encouraged, my brother. Yeah. We do fall down. Yeah. But guess what? With yeah. God, we're able to get up again. Yeah. We do stumble and yeah. we do fall. Yeah. But we can fall seven times and seven times 70 will get up again. Because yeah. our hand is in his hand. Yeah. The hand of the man from Galilee. Y'all yeah. remember that song? Yeah. That's from back in the 70s. Yeah. I know y'all don't remember that. Yes. But as long as our hand is in his hand, yes. as long as our focus is on him, our destiny is tied up yes. and tangled up in God. Yes. Because of our destiny, God will provide for us a ram yes, in the bush. Oh, he and he'll do it just in the nick of time. Yes. Didn't he do it for Abraham? Yes, he when he spoke to Abraham, told Abraham that seed I gave you. See, this speaks right to us. God will bless us abundantly. And then when God wants us to come into the house, we can't come, but God has to sit home with this blessing you gave him. I can't leave my wife, and she don't want to go to church. So I can't come and bless you, God. I can't leave my husband, Lord. You gave him to me, but he don't want to go to church. So I got to stay here with the blessing. But don't you know, we better honor the gift giver. We better glorify yeah. the gift. Yeah. Am I right about yeah. it? Yeah. Look yes. at Abraham. Come on now. Wanted a child so bad. Even went against God. God had a plan, told him, I have a child for you. Gonna be born from your loin. But then him and Sarah got together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Begin to talk about things. Mm -hmm. And then they entered, I'm getting ahead of myself, God. But they introduced Haggai into the situation. Yeah. I want to tell you today, don't introduce no outside of God and what God is doing Amen. in your life. If Amen. God is giving you a helpmate, then you and your helpmate discuss that Amen. thing. Don't bring in no family. Yeah. Don't bring in no yeah. friends. Yeah. Don't bring in no outside influences. Because yeah. God has uniquely designed your future. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, that which I have joined together, yeah. let no man yeah. put a son yeah. But if you invite a man in, then you already put it asunder. Yeah. You already defeated God's plan and his purpose for your marriage. Yeah. When you Im invite a third party in. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. I know y'all don't want to hear that. Uh -huh. Amen. That's the truth. Truth. Be encouraged. Yeah. Be encouraged today. Yeah. Because of our destiny, God will make a way for us. Yeah. God told Abraham to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. But it appears that even when he was talking to Abraham, that it was just a test. Don't you know God will test us as well yes. to see if we love him more yes. than we love the other yes. gods? Yes. Don't you know God will test us, allow trial yes. and tribulation yes. to come in our life? Don't you know he'll cause the car not to crank on Sunday morning yes. just to see if you'll call somebody for a jump or if you'll just say, I'm, hey, I ain't going <laughs> to. Don't you know he'll hold back the alarm on the alarm clock to see if you're going to be uh, interested enough to get up and prepare to go 
anyway, even if you come late. Yeah. But most of us say, well, I'm already late. These are tests. These are tests. And one day, we're going to have to stand before the master. One day, we're going to have to give an account for every idle word. Every one of them. So it behooves us today to pay close attention to what the adversary offers to us as a way out. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how he'll present. Oh, well, you ain't got to go. You know your car ain't working right. Oh, you ain't got to go. You know you don't work hard all week. Well, don't go. It's, it's, it's late. But God is saying, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden. Come unto me if you're tired. Come and ask me if you need a new car. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. God will test us. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Yeah. But we can't put the gift in front of the gift giver. Am I right about it? Amen. God is the gift giver. Yes, he is. But we can't put the gifts before our God. God will do for you when you think everything else is lost. Yeah. God will make a way for us. When we think that our destiny is dried up, mm -hmm. when we think that we waited too long to become anything, when we think that there is no more life left in our loins, when we think that there's no more tomorrow for us, God will show up. And when he shows up, he will shake things up on yeah. behalf of his people. Amen. Second Chronicles said, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself what? Strong in behalf of them whose hearts is perfect toward him. Am I right about it? Right. He'll show himself strong on behalf of his people. So I say to you today, church, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Yes. Blessed are we when yes. men revile us. Yes. Blessed are we when men persecute us. Yes. Hallelujah. Blessed are we when men say all manner of evil against us faultly for the sake of our relationship with God, for the sake of our destiny. See, the enemy knows all about us. I think about the seven sons of Sceva and how they were trying to perpetrate one thing, but the enemy stepped up and said, look here, I see you out here trying to prophesy, and I see you out here laying hands, and I see you making all these uh, claims, but I tell you what, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Jesus. Now that's what the enemy yeah. mm -hmm. said to the sons of Sceva. Yeah. So don't think that we're fooling anybody. Yeah. Because even the devil is yeah. subject to God's children. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. That's, what, yeah. that's what the disciples came back and told you. Jesus, even the devils are subject unto us. Uh -huh. Meaning we have authority over them. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we can't fake the funk. Mm -hmm. How about that? We got to be real. Either we got it. Oh, we don't. And if we don't, that's okay because we know who has it. Yeah. God yeah. has all power yeah. in his hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Everything we need is in his hand. Yeah. Am I right about yeah. it? So again, I say rejoice, church. Rejoice. Hallelujah. And be exceedingly glad. For great is our reward in heaven if we faint not. Yeah. For so persecuted they the prophets which came before us. So yes, we're going to have some persecutions. Yes, we're going to go through some trials. Yes. We're going to go through some tests. But our destiny cannot fail. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Amen. Amen. Don't be dismayed. Our destiny is tied to our test. Yes. Am I right about it? Yes. Our destiny is tied to our failures. Am I right about it? Amen. Our destiny is tied to our will. When you've been created as a change agent, you got to know that trials and tribulations are going to come. We don't have some trials. We won't be able to have a testimony. And without a testimony, we can't impact lives. Amen. Because if we don't have a testimony, that means that we're talking loud and saying nothing.
that? Am I right about it? Amen. Yes, sir. We are the change agent. We are the salt of the earth. What does salt do when you apply it to things? Yes. Salt changes the composition. Yes. Yes. Salt heals or salt makes it wrong. Yes. Salt is the change agent. And you and I are the salt of the earth. Yes. God has uniquely designed us as such. So when we apply our lives to situations around us, those situations have no choice but to change. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. We don't have to be subject to what man throws our way. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. My husband and I had a situation about a month ago, and they tried to throw some mess our way, and I was trying to be humble, you know, about it. I just said, well, I ain't going to worry about it. My husband said, oh, no, we ain't. Mm -hmm. He said, no, we ain't going for that. That's right. Mm -mm. We ain't going for that. He said, because God didn't say we had to go for it. Amen. He said, we got this, this, and this. That's what God said. Yeah, that's right. I just sat back. I said, well, go on, man. God, do what you do. Yeah. And I want you to know he stood up. Yeah. And it made a difference. Yeah. And it didn't take long. It made a difference the next day. Y'all yeah. uh, yeah. don't agree with Y'all don't understand the authority that we have. All we got to know is how to speak the Great word of word. God yeah. into yeah. our situation. Yeah. We got to know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Yeah. And then after rightly dividing it, we have to know how to take what word and apply it to what situation. Yeah. In, the yeah. Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If I'm sick, I don't need to talk about paying my tithes. Amen. Hallelujah. I need to say some, of, uh, some scripture about some healing. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right about yeah. it? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Trouble all in my home. I don't need to talk about buying no new car. Lord, bless me with this, bless me. I need to say, Lord, root this devil out. Yeah. Up a stand against this adversary yeah. in my home. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We got to know how to rightly divide and rightly yeah. apply yeah. the word of truth. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. I want you to know it doesn't matter what we say or do. It don't matter how far we fall away from the vine. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our father, he is the husband man. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no matter how far we fall away, then yeah. there's nothing that can separate us. Nothing, nothing, nothing. can separate us yeah. from the love of Christ. No tribulation can separate us. No yeah. distress can separate us. Yeah. No persecution or famine can separate us. Yeah. The word of God said nakedness or peril or sword can't nothing, nothing. separate us from nothing. the nothing. love of God. It goes on to say, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. Yes. Meaning we got to go through some things. Yes. Every day is not going to be sunny. The sun is not always going to be shining because we are counted as sheep for yes. the slaughter. Right. Right. Every day we're killed. Every day, yeah. Every day we're persecuted. Every day. But at the end of the day, yeah. we got the victory. Yeah. 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 At the end of the day, we got the victory. The word of God says, nay, in all things we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm persuaded, church, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities. Hallelujah. Yeah. Nor the powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Yeah. Neither height, nor Hallelujah. depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us mm -hmm. from the love of our glorious yeah. God yeah. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Am I right about it? Amen. Yeah. Let's go on and close this thing. Only disobedience can separate us. Yeah. Only disobedience can separate us. Mm -hmm. The only thing that causes us to fail, the only thing that causes us to lose out on what God has divinely designed for our lives is our own disobedience. In the spirit of disobedience, it's known as witchcraft. Just want you to know that. It's known as witchcraft because it's an abomination before God. And any time we rebel against what God commands in our lives, it's an abomination. And the Bible says it's witchcraft. Yeah. Uh -huh. Am I right about it? Yeah. Even Abraham was disobedient before God. We know that he got back in right standing with God. But there was a period of time when he was even disobedient before God. But as we learned this morning in Sunday school, whatever we do, even if we error, hallelujah, and foolishness, God's still right by our side. Yeah. Hallelujah. Giving us another chance. Yeah. Showering us with his grace. That's why yeah. he says, my grace is sufficient, sufficient for you. No matter what 
you're going through, my grace, is sufficient. Yeah. Anytime we rebel against God, yeah. it's an abomination. Yes, it is. When we try to go ahead of God to help God bring his plan to fruition yes. in our lives, mm -hmm. that's disobedience. Mm -hmm. Look at God and Abraham. God told Abraham in the 15th chapter, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. Mm -hmm. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and one that's born in my house shall be my heir. But the word goes on to say that the Lord came to Abram and said this, This shall not be your heir, but I shall be an heir shall come forth out of thy own bowels. Yeah. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. And that one shall be your heir. But then he brought forth, a, 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 he brought him from abroad and said, Look now toward the heavens. Yeah. And tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in God. Ain't that something? Even after Abraham or Abram believed what God said, he still partnered with Sarah to deny what God said. We just like that. God will tell us what it's going to be, what, how it's going to come to pass. And then when we don't see that thing coming to fruition as fast as we think it should be, then we'll get to work trying to, well, let, let, me, let, let us just do this. Because God already said we we're going to have a son. So let, we'll just get a son through this means. Mm -hmm. We're going to become millionaires through this means. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? No sorry. So if you're chasing a million dollar mark, and you struggling and you working four jobs and your house in ruin and your family told because you struggling trying to make a million dollars that God already promised you. Don't you know mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. all of the riches in the world belong yeah. to God? Houses and land, cattle on a thousand hills. Don't you know he can move on the heart of somebody that don't even know you because he promised it in his word? He said, men that don't even know you will give unto your husband. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we don't have to sacrifice anything to go against what God said. Hallelujah. Because whatever he has for us, he just open up the door. And we just walk right in. Am I right about it? I'm going to tell you a quick testimony about my husband and I. And I had to tell him because he, I don't think he knew. But for years, I mean, wait, even in my 20s, early 30s, I wanted to own some properties. A lot of properties. Amen. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Amen. And several times I had had opportunity mm -hmm. to purchase some things. And every time, mm -hmm. something would happen. And it wouldn't come to pass. So five more years have passed, another opportunity pop up. Oh, this must be evil. Mm -hmm. Something will happen. And it wouldn't come to pass. Third time, I said, oh, I, money in the bank, credit good, all them things they tell you, you know, I, I, I got it this time. Mm -hmm. Something happened. Mm -hmm. And it didn't come to pass. So I said, you know what, by this time now I'm, I'm mature. Mm -hmm. I said, something about that must not be for me. Amen. I said, cause so I, it, 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 it keep escaping me. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know, don't let don't let go of God. Cause He said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Yeah. Is that what He said? Yeah. He said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. He I'm sitting at my desk one day, tending to my business, and an email pop up. Come on now. I said, What in the world is this here? I click on the email. It's an email from a company in the states telling me. There's some property on sale that fits your profile. Ooh, whoa. Yeah. I said, oh my God, what in the world? Amen. So you know we nosy. So I clicked on it. Let me see what they're talking about. I clicked on it. See what this is. So I began to read and read and sound pretty good. And the next day, I didn't say that to my husband about it, but then the next day, 
Another email came. I said, wait a minute. Let me give God a disclaimer. Uh -huh. This was after we came off the fast. Mm -hmm. Hello, Come somebody. On now. Come on now. Hello, Come on somebody. Now. Amen. There were some things I put before God yes. while we was on the fast. Mm -hmm. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Yes. My God. Long story short, we own some other things now. How about that? <laughs> Didn't have to want no back and no forth. Want no round robin. People were so nice. I said, God, it just won't time yet. It just won't time yet. So I encourage you today, wait on God. Don't, if, it's, if it's in your heart, God put it there. Yes, he did. If it's in your heart, God put it there. Yes, he did. So wait on it. Cause I just about got, well I had gave up cause I, I didn't cause I stopped trying I stopped looking, but what I forgot was I had set up that account way back uh -huh. so that I could be notified. <laughs> Hadn't got no emails. And don't you know some other stuff that came across the board since then? Thank but it won't God's time. Yeah, it won't God's time. So we gotta wait on God. Wait on. Don't you know Abraham and Sarah wanted a baby before they was a hundred? Yeah. Sarah was a reproach in the community. Yeah. Laughed at. Talked about yeah. amongst all the women whispering about her. Yeah. Abraham, a man, no yeah. children all, among all the other men, and he a man of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's what the world said. They, they in the church, they can't afford that. They in the church, they having them kind of financial problems. They in the church, they can't do this, they can't do that. That's because, because the world expects God to show up. Amen. The world expects God to show up. The church is the one sitting back, but the world is saying, You a child of God, why are you going through? Mm -hmm. All you got to do is speak and God will come to your rescue. Yeah. All you got to do is call it what it is and God will manifest it. Yeah. That's what the world is saying to the church. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. My God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you God. I bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. We got to move on. We have divine destiny, church. Divine destiny in God. We're tied up and tangled up with him. I want you to know that God has the ability to transcend time and, and space. Yes, he does. If he promised it, I want you to know today he'll bring it to pass. Yes, right. In the name of Jesus. Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. Mm -hmm. And he lived after Isaac was born. Mm -hmm. So don't you let your enemy fool you. That's right. You have not run out of time. Yeah. Tell him today, I have not, I I have have not, not run, out of time. run out of time. You can still make it. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to know that you can still make it. Yeah. Your destiny is the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. God has not turned his mind. He has not turned his back on you. Don't worry about it. If you think your destiny has been shipwrecked, I want you to know that you ought to stop trying to swim. Your destiny has not been shipwrecked. Although your destiny might have been in a storm, I want you to know when God tore up the ship, he left some broken pieces big enough for you to come to the shore yeah. on the broken pieces. Yeah. So I say to you today, pick yourself up. Yeah. Dust yourself off yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Make up in your mind that your destiny yeah. is attainable through yeah. him who has established your going. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. Declare it today, church, that I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ. Which strengthens me. Hallelujah. Yeah. You got to speak to your adversary. Yeah. You got to put your, your word in the atmosphere. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. That's why God said that we ought to pray in the spirit. Because when we pray in the spirit, the enemy don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. But God hears our prayer. Yeah. And when he hears our prayer, he puts a roadblock in the path of yeah. the enemy. So he can bring all of his blessings to yeah. fruition in yeah. our lives. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell yourself today, I might not be the tallest. I might not be the, I might not be the most attractive. I, 
I might not be the most intellectual. I may not have great riches. I may not own fine cars and homes. But there's one thing for sure. I have divinely appointed destiny. I have a divinely appointed destiny. Hallelujah. Come on, get back. Show thee. And he promises Abraham and us, 
I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. And not only will I bless thee, but I'll make thy name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those that bless you. And likewise, I'll curse those that curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Those blessings are reciprocal. That's why he says all families. Because we can't beat God's giving. So the more we give, the more he gives to us. Am I right about it? Even in our time of sorrow, he says, blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. In the name of Jesus. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Our destiny. Our destiny. We have a destiny and a hope. The grave is not our end. Mm -hmm. The grave is our resting place. Our place of transition, if you will. But our destiny shall not die. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Divine destiny. It's in God that we live and move and have our being. It's in Him. It's in Him. It's in Him that our destiny is realized. It's in Him that our destiny is birthed. It's in Him that we move from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. Let us stand that we might go before the throne of grace. I want to offer three invitations. The first invitation is for anyone under the sound of my voice, anyone who has joined us through means of media or Facebook. If you're listening to this broadcast today, if you're in our midst, today and you know for yourself that you don't know God as your Lord and Savior. If you don't have an intimate and personal relationship with him, if you don't call him Lord, if you don't realize you have a destiny and a hope, I submit to you today, you don't have a relationship. If that's you, raise your hand. Raise your hand right where you are. And we're going to invite God to come in yeah. to your heart. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, now is a perfect time to get to know who he is. Yeah. There's no greater time than the present. Yes, Lord. If you just Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. That the Lord, hallelujah, raised him from the dead after three long days in the grave. If you believe that he has yet ascended up into the heavens and is now sitting at the right hand of the Father on high. If you will proclaim the good news of the gospel. If you would raise your hand and say, Lord, send me. Send me. I'll go. I want you to know you're saved. 
Lightning doesn't have to strike. Angelic beings don't have to swoop down into your bedroom, into your living room, into your room where you are. But you are safe if you've made an open confession of the Lord Jesus with your mouth. And if you believe it in your heart. And if you commit to living life differently from this moment forward. He is never going to leave you. He is not going to forsake you. You are not going to run without falling. You are not going to walk without stumbling. You are going to error. But if you have confessed the Lord Jesus, he promises yes. that his grace is sufficient. Amen. And that nothing can come upon you except that which is common to all men. Yes. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. If that's you and you confess Christ. Yes, Lord. And if you don't have a church home, find yourself a church home. Yes, Lord. If you don't have a church home, dial into this channel every yes. Sunday morning at 04 a.m. EST time. Yes, Lord. Join us here at Rebirth House of Hope where the word of God is being preached. Yes. Hallelujah. Where the presence of the Lord is in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Heavens are rejoicing over one soul yes. that's been saved. Yeah. The heavens are rejoicing. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. The heavens are rejoicing over yeah. one that was saved. Your name has now been written in the Lamb's yes. book of life. The same blessing. The same crown. Yes. The same white robe. In the Lamb's Book of Life. There's no eraser to take it out. God has engraved it in his book. Sealed it with his promise. Covered it in his blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Backslidden. Backslidden. Come short of the glory of God. We've all sinned in some way. So we're all guilty of some form of sin on today. That's why God encourages us to repent daily of our sin. Because sin separates us from God. Disobedience is witchcraft and abomination before God. But when we repent, God says, I am a restorer. He makes us a restorer of streets to dwell in. He says, I'll give you opportunity to eat from vineyards you didn't plant. You live in houses you didn't build. God says, I'm a restorer of the breach. I'll bring rivers in your desert places. Hallelujah. Forgive us, God. We surrender. The song says, I surrender all. God, we surrender right now. Wash us that we might be clean. Purge us with hyssop in the name of Jesus so you can use us for your glory. Purge us, God. Wash us, God. Clean us, God. In the name of Jesus. Salvation. Yes. We ask you, God, to draw them nigh unto thee, God, 
in the name of Jesus. We ask you, God, to stay the hand of the enemy. We ask you, God, to cancel the death assignment until they have an opportunity to get it right with you, God. God, you said, I looked among me and I couldn't find one that would stand in the gap, make up the gap for his brothers. Well, God, here we are. Here is Rebirth House of Hope, God. Yes. Standing, offering ourselves as a living sacrifice, yes. holy, acceptable unto you, God, which is our reasonable service. Use us, God. For your glory to reach a dying world strengthen us equip us prepare us for the work of ministry edify this body God yeah. teach us your will and your way, your way. in the name of Jesus now unto him who is able to keep us from falling to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever Amen 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 Amen, Amen. Amen. Yeah.